Okay, so today we're going to show you how to make a food forest. Uh, food forest is exactly what it sounds like. It's a forest that produces food. Okay, and what we use is a rainwater harvesting ditch on contour, and then we plant up the mound behind it. And we've kind of fortified this food forest using some hugoculture and some biochar. But Chidanan is going to explain how to do all this because he's headed up this project, so I'll hand uh, the explanation over to Chidanan right now. So I'm Chitanan from California. I've done a bit of organic gardening in California and just took my first PDC last summer with Jeff Lawton. And so this land, now we have a chance to experiment on those techniques that I learned this last summer. So I'm super excited. And the biggest thing I'm excited about is the food forest. And basically that's like uh, the pinnacle of food growing uh, that I feel like we can get to with harmonizing with nature because you get to a point where um, the food, you actually create a forest that is of food and it can be self-sustaining, meaning seeds will drop and continue on without even our effort. So maybe nine years down the road, we can walk away because this design is in place and it'll be self-sustaining food forests that we can walk away from. The forest is making swales, so that's our water catchment. So the level of the land is slowly sloping down this way and then draining into uh, our pond release, which eventually drains into the ocean. So the idea is to catch all the water we can before it eventually totally releases out to uh, where it would naturally outflow. So in this way, we have, we'll have two sets of swales uh, catching all the water we can. And then it's slowly sinking into the ground here. And then when the swales fill up, it'll be released out here. So catching all we can slowly, passively into the land itself for growing. Um, so basically contour is a level place on the land. So if our slope is this way, our swales are perpendicular to uh, the slope of the land. And so we're digging this swale and it's all uh, level contour here. So in the rainy season, this will fill up level and be soaking in to this mound here, which is where we'll plant the trees. Now we got the place of where we'd like our swale. And so we dig at an angle and taking that excess uh, soil, we just put it up here on this side. So this will be where the water sits at an angle slowly down here. And underneath this uh, mound, we have logs of coconut and some of the dead trees that were around here. And uh, when we laid them down in place, we started a fire uh, a slow burning fire with our on hand uh, pujari over here, Shivanand. <laughs> and we made biochar. So if you have a slow burning uh, fire, it makes biochar, which is like charcoal, which is really good for the microorganisms. So it's kind of a combination of techniques here under the soil. It's hugoculture, which is breaking down of uh, woody organic matter, which will put the fungi into the soil, uh, combined with biochar, which is a home for microorganisms. So it's just adding a bunch of organic matter here for inside the swale, which is going to maximize the water holding capacity and the nutrients when the trees get down there, when, the, when everything is broken up down there. So in monsoon time, the idea is to catch all the water we can and hold it in the soil and the tree life, the plant life itself, um, to extend us through the dry season. So the water will come and on this slope, it'll come, be coming down here, and normally it would rush right down into the pond and then release into the ocean. And what we're doing is creating a slow, passive water catchment uh, with these swales. So normally our water runoff would go straight out this way. Um, but in this way, we're slowing down water, and it is a way to recharge the groundwater. This is one of the only ways to recharge our groundwater. So right now we're taking a bunch of water out uh, with wells, and not all the rainwater goes back into the groundwater. Actually, most of it runs off like roadways and all these things we have on Earth now. So swales and ponds and dams are a way we can recharge the groundwater because it slows down water. It sits in a puddle for some months in rainy time and slowly sinks in to this mound behind. So this is fully saturated when monsoon season's over and we come into our dry period. So it's extending our, um, our moisture, our water for some months afterwards. So eventually, we won't have to water these trees at all. Uh, they'll be fully taken care of by the design of this, this soil. So as a food forest matures, or a, food, a forest garden matures in its lifetime, the fruit trees will be growing bigger and the 
pioneer species of legumes will be offering themselves uh, for those fruit species to grow. And this will be full of, you know, a rich soil and also holding, holding water. And um, this is basically mimicking nature, uh, making a forest of food. Um, and so humans can, with little effort, we can have an, you know, abundant food source. Um, it's it's multi layers of, you know, avocados, cashews, mangoes, citrus, coffee, cacao, bananas, papayas, uh, vines growing up, you know, of beans and cucumbers and taro, uh, water loving plants. Um, so it's all stacked in this, right here along the swale, and uh, it's basically mimicking what's already happening in nature. But we have a little role in that, uh, and that we're picking a diverse, diversity of species uh, that we will benefit from, that will give us food. Uh, so our role, I realized, is kind of like that of like a bird that spreads seeds, but we can be like spreaders of sapling and shape the earth in a way that it is in harmony with what's already happening, and it's also to our benefit. <laughs> Mandamanda